in the nitration of methyl benzoate, you took cl the clear liquid methyl benzoate and you reacted it with two other clear liquids, concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. So those three compounds were your reagents. After the reaction took place, the product you got was a compound called methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. So here, I want to show you how you could calculate your percent yield for this reaction. Remember that the percent yield tells you how much product you got compared to how much product you could have gotten. So basically, how efficiently did you perform this reaction? The formula for percent yield is that percent yield equals the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. The actual yield is what you get when you go into the laboratory. At the end of the experiment, you measure your product, how much you actually got when you actually did the experiment, that's your actual yield. It's not something you can calculate. It's something that's going to be different for every person, uh, depending on how efficiently they performed the experiment. The theoretical yield is something you can calculate. That's how much product you would have gotten if you made every single molecule react and you collected every single molecule. If every molecule of methyl benzoate um, that you put into your reaction flask reacted and turned into the product and none of it evaporated and none of it was left in any containers or stuck to anything, um, the maximum amount of methyl 3 nitrobenzoate that you could have possibly gotten, that's your theoretical yield. And then we multiply by 100 because we want a percent. So it's just a more convenient, a more intuitive way of representing this number. So really what, you're, what this is saying is, how much did you get compared to what you could have gotten expressed as a percent? So for example, if you, if you calculate this and your percent yield is 50%, then that means you got 50% of the product you could have theoretically gotten. Okay, so let's try to calculate the percent yield um, for this reaction. So in order to get the percent yield, you, you need these two things, the actual yield and the theoretical yield. The actual yield is uh, really just something you would have measured. And in our case, that's something you would have taken a picture of in step 78 of the reaction. So the, you would have weighed the amount of product you have in step 78 of our reaction, that's the grams of methyl 3-nitrobenzoate that you're going to put there. So there's no calculation involved for that. What there is a calculation involved for is the theoretical yield, how much you could theoretically have gotten. And for this, you calculate this using your limiting reagent. So we had three reagents. We had methyl benzoate, we had concentrated nitric acid, and we had concentrated sulfuric acid. The one that runs out first when the reaction happens limits how much product you could make. And so it's called the limiting reagent. In our reaction, the reagent that ran out first was methyl benzoate. And so um, the, we're going to use the mass of ben methyl benzoate that we started with to calculate how much product we could have theoretically made. We can't make any more than this limiting amount allows us to. You would get that mass from step 35 of our procedure. So if you look at, you would have taken a picture in step 35 of the mass of methyl benzoate that your specific group uh, weighed out. Once you have that mass, anytime you uh, do this, you're going to go from the grams of your limiting reagent, so in this case, grams of methyl benzoate, and ultimately, we want to get to, we want to convert that to grams of our product, methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. In other words, 
we want to say, given the amount of methylbenzoate we started with, how much product could we have possibly gotten? And you can see in this process here, we want to go from grams of one thing to grams of a different thing. And there's a standard procedure for accomplishing that, that conversion that you might remember from general chemistry. Anytime you want to convert from grams of one thing to grams of a different thing, you always follow this sort of flow chart. You go from grams of the first thing to moles of the first thing. Then you go from moles of the first thing to moles of the second thing. And finally, you go from moles of the second thing to grams of the second thing. So here, A, our first thing, is our limiting reagent, and that is methyl benzoate. So I'm going to sort of copy this flow chart. And anywhere I have A, I'm going to erase it, and I'm going to put in methyl benzoate. B is our product. In this case, that's methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. And so anywhere I have B in this flowchart, I'm going to erase it and put methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. And now we're ready to think about the conversions. Each one of these arrows represents a conversion. So you can see that we have one, two, three conversions that we have to do. And for every conversion, you need a conversion factor that relates the two units that you want to convert between. So for example, if you want to do this first conversion, you have to know how those two units relate. So how do grams of methyl benzoate relate to moles of methyl benzoate? And anytime you're relating grams to moles, you use what's called the molar mass. That's the mass of one mole. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So if you were to put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methyl benzoate on a balance, how many grams would they weigh? And you could look this up from a handbook like the CRC handbook or the Merck Index, or you could find it online. Um, you could also calculate it from the periodic table. If you did that, if you used, did any of those options, you would find that one mole of methyl benzoate, you, you always put a one next to the number of moles because it's the mass of one mole, the molar mass, one mole weighs 136. 0.15 grams. So that's how these two units relate. So that's our first conversion factor that we'll use to um, do our first conversion. For our second conversion factor, we're going to relate these two units. So we'll need a second, uh, to do the second conversion, we'll need a second conversion factor. And we'll need to know how moles of methyl benzoate relate to moles of methyl 3 nitro benzoate. This second conversion factor you always get from the balanced chemical equation. How many moles of this molecule react to produce how many moles of the other molecule? So if we look back at our equation, each mole of methyl 3 benzoate will produce one mole of methyl 3 nitro benzoate. Really, every molecule of our reactant would turn into one molecule of our product. And so one mole of reactant would turn into one mole of product. If a coefficient ever isn't written in, it's an implied one. And so it's really these coefficients that uh, tell you how the moles of these two different compounds relate. So we can plug that in here. We know that one mole of methyl benzoate will, uh, will be used for every one mole of methyl 3 nitrobenzoate that's made. OK, last but not least, for our third conversion, uh, we need a third conversion factor. And to do that, uh, to get that, we just have to relate these two units. 
So how do moles of methyl-3 nitrobenzoate relate to grams of methyl-3 nitrobenzoate? Anytime you're relating moles and grams, you use the molar mass, which again, you could look up in the CRC handbook in the Merck index, you could find it online, or you could even calculate it using the periodic table. If you use any of those methods, you would find that the molar mass of methyl-3 nitrobenzoate is every mole, every one mole of methyl-3 nitrobenzoate weighs 181.15 grams of methyl-3 nitrobenzoate. And so these are our three conversion factors. Now that you have these, you would take the grams of limiting reagent you actually used from step 35. That's what you're going to start with. You're going to say, I have step 35, however many that is for you. So you would put in the number that you took a picture of on your balance. That many grams of methyl benzoate. And then every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication uh, sign, a fraction bar, and the units that you start with go on the bottom of that fraction because you want them to cancel out as you convert these units one to another. And we're going to fill that first fraction in with our first conversion factor. So next to grams of methyl benzoate, we're going to put 136.15. Going over the fraction bar is like going across the equal sign, and so on top, we're going to have one mole of methyl benzoate. Notice that grams of methyl benzoate cancel. You have that on the top and the bottom of a fraction. Anything that's both on the top and the bottom of a fraction cancels out. So the unit we'd be left with now is moles of methyl benzoate. But we don't want that. We want to know how many grams of our product we could have theoretically gotten. So we want grams of methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. So we have to do another conversion. Every time you do a conversion, you write, and I'm going to, uh, you write a multiplication sign, a fraction bar, and the units you started with go on the bottom of that fraction so that they cancel out. So here, that would be moles of methyl benzoate. We're going to fill in our second fraction with our second conversion factor. So next to moles of methyl benzoate, we'll go the number 1. Going over the fraction bar is like going across the equal sign. So on top, we're going to write 1 mole of methyl 3 nitro benzoate. Notice that moles of methyl benzoate cancel out. It's both on the top and the bottom of a fraction. So if we stopped here, the unit we would be left with is moles of methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. But we don't want moles of our product. We want grams of our product so that we can compare it to how much product we actually measured. So we have to do one last conversion. I'm going to, con because the page is running out here, I'm going to continue sort of down here. So every time you do a conversion, or actually, let me see if I can make this smaller. Every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication sign, a fraction bar. The units you start with go on the bottom of the next fraction so that they'll cancel out. So we have moles of methyl 3 nitrobenzoate. And we're going to fill in this third and final fraction with our third and final conversion factor that we found. So next to moles of methyl 3 nitrobenzoate, we're going to put the number 1. Going over the fraction bars, like going across the equal sign, so on top of this fraction, we're going to write 181.15 grams of methyl 3 
nitro benzoate. Notice that moles of methyl 3 nitro benzoate cancels out. It's on the top and the bottom of those fractions. So we're left with grams of our product, grams of methyl 3 nitro benzoate. So you'd plug this into a calculator and you would get the th th maximum amount. Theoretically, this is the amount of your product. You would be uh, the most product you could have possibly made. And the way you would plug this into a calculator is you'd take the number you measured from step 35 of our experiment, how many grams of methyl benzoate you used, multiply by 1, enter, divided by 136.15, enter, times 1, enter, divided by 1, enter, times 181.15, enter, divided by 1, enter, and that will give you your theoretical yield. So this is how you would calculate your theoretical yield. Once you have that, you plug it into this formula. Remember, your actual yield you got from step 78, you would measure that at the end of your experiment. So you'll put in the number for your actual yield that you measured at the end of your experiment. You'll plug in the number for your theoretical yield, which we just calculated. using this stoichiometry here. And then you just multiply by 100, and that gives you your percent yield. And you will get a sense of how efficiently you performed the reaction. How much reagent did you lose? Did it, that either evaporated or got stuck in a container, or maybe just never reacted because maybe the temperature wasn't high enough or the solution wasn't mixed well enough or whatever. So that's how you would calculate the percent yield for the experiment where you put a nitro group onto methyl benzoate using concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid.